is a child ever too young to start working with a computer? Well, they don't think so here at the Bracker Children's Center in Santa Clara, California. This is a preschool class. The children aged three, four, and five years old, and they're busy clicking away, mousing away, not only learning their ABCs and their one, two, threes, but developing basic computer skills. Today, we'll focus on computer software for children on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, Personal Computer Division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Gina Smith, editor in chief of Electronics Entertainment Magazine. Gina, we have a magazine here. This is not yours, but one called Club Kidsoft, software magazine for kids. It's all about computer software for kids. And what's especially nice, it has a listing of all these different software titles for kids we could buy. And the way you buy it is what's really fun. It's rather unique. And uh, you're going to explain to me if I wanted to buy Storybook Weaver through uh, this magazine, how do I do it? You know, what you didn't say is that this is a magazine for kids, just uh -huh. like Highlight Magazine. You give it to their kid. They pick the titles they think they would like the most. Then you pop in the CD-ROM disc that comes with the magazine. Mm -hmm. You can look at the synopsis of the particular title. For instance, here we see Storybook Weaver, uh -huh. the hardware requirements. You can see a demo of it, mm -hmm. or you can go right to the fun part, which is buying it. Just to go buy it. Okay, yeah. so what do we do to buy the software now? My kid's screaming, buy me Storybook Weaver. And it should happen really fast. The idea behind this is you can buy it without ever going to the store, which is really uncomfortable for a lot of parents who don't know as much so about software. So all these kids. software titles are on the CD-ROM, and we're going to basically unlock it so that we can install it on that's our hard That's all we're going to do. Okay. It's really easy. In fact... All right, I have a phone for you. Well, so that's I'm exactly say, what I need. show me that this really works. So you just pick up the phone, and you dial the 800 number you see at the top mm -hmm. of the screen, which is 1-800- 354-6150, and hopefully someone will answer. Okay. Thank you for calling Kidsoft. This is Tammy. How may I help you? Hi, Tammy. My name is Gina Smith. I'm calling from Computer Chronicles, the TV show, and I wanted to unlock Storybook Weaver. Okay, great. Would that be for Macintosh or IBM? That would be for the Mac. Okay. Is there a password on the top of your screen? There is. Right at the top, it's H-X-H-E-Y-N-T-E-M-D-I-B-L-L. Okay, great. Just be one moment here. I'll put it in. Okay. okay, I've got an unlock code for you. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, it's F H W. F H W. G E V. G E V. B D R U. B D R U. C E S T. C E S T. And just click on the unlock okay. yellow bar. We just click on unlock for the miracles of modern technology. Okay. And it's going to. Wow. Wow, and it's just going to download all the files that I need for this. Right. There should be a Mac Pub icon right there now. It's been added to your hard disk. Great. Well, thank you very much, Tammy. Okay, you're welcome. Thanks uh, for calling all right. Kidsoft. Thanks. A great way to buy software for your kids, yeah. huh? Yeah, easy and brainless. Okay. Today, we will look at the neatest new programs for your children that take full advantage of your computer and new multimedia capabilities. One of the great things about kids' software is that it really combines fun and learning. And one good example is the new Student Writing Center for Windows from the Learning Company. We found it being used at the Dover Elementary School in San Pablo, California. All right, who needs, who needs help? Bill Kaufman is a Chapter 1 resource teacher at Dover School. He focuses on reading, writing, and math skills for kids who are at an educational disadvantage. Most of the kids in this class come from non-English speaking homes. Mr. Kaufman. Kaufman is using the program Student Writing Center to teach writing skills. It combines a word processor complete with spelling and grammar checkers with basic desktop publishing functions. He says it's helping the kids to actually get more ideas on paper. We're trying to get this sense through to them that you go ahead and you get it down any way you can get it down, and then we'll go back and we'll fix the punctuation, we'll fix the spelling, we'll change the sentences around, we'll do all of that, which, uh, you know, we hope empowers them a lot to be willing to write more and uh, take more risks in writing rather than just, you know, uh, you know, I like my dog, my dog is brown. Ready-made templates let students keep a journal or work on reports and newsletters. Sometimes we do Dover Special People and we pick teachers 
the ones that we think are special. All of them are, but uh, this one. And we do the um, student of the month. The oversized icon bar at the top of the screen gives kids quick and easy access to the printer, fonts, and pictures, which they can drop right into their text. They do like to be able to pull the pictures up. They, they get a lot of success real fast, and it looks real professional. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. There's no end to what a child can learn on a computer. We're going to begin with a look at three new educational programs that cover a broad range of subjects. And here to help us are Ragni Pastorell from Soleil Software, Alan Tigerson from MediaVision, and Dominique Clausens of ImageSmith. Let's start with Soleil and Zerk's Learning Safari. What would my kid learn using this? Well, this is for the three to seven year olds, uh -huh. and we introduce them to math, science, and pre reading. And the program has seven activities. Right, show me. This is a story of Maya the Lost Lion Cub, alphabet soup in the kitchen, mm -hmm. hide and seek in the closet, here's the picture book, Zerk's magic box, and five puzzles. Okay, so the child can click on one of those areas and get into that activity? That's correct. So show me one. So we'll go into the alphabet soup. Zerk is our chubby little character mm -hmm. who will introduce his hiding game and at the same time teach letters to okay, children. So there's Zerk sitting on the edge of that bowl of soup. And he will do a swan dive into the soup. And as he comes out, uh -huh. he will hide under one letter on the placemat, which is going to be different each time. Okay, so he hit under the O. o. Now what do I have to do? No. You yeah. can do anything, but if you hit the O, o. click on the O. Ostrich. Oh, you get an ostrich. So it morphs into a character animal o. that begins with that letter. Letter O. Mm -hmm. And the same thing will happen if you yeah. click on any of these letters. You get the same visual sure. effect. So after he has given you the reward, now we'll go out and see okay, one so of the other activity. Well, yes. Now we go to the story of the lost lion cub. This is going to be my. It's just like a storybook without words. Mm -hmm. And we go into the story. You will find Maya completely lost because she's so curious. She's mm -hmm. been everywhere. And what do we do? And now, when you pick up the mouse uh -huh. and you move the mouse, you actually move you Maya. Move uh -huh. And you can move her over and try to find a friend that will help her find her way home. Uh -huh. So oh. she nudges the bird. Yes, and the bird says, and follow, and me. The bird says follow me. Right. And we'll quickly take a look at maybe one of the puzzles. Okay, great, yeah. We have five puzzles. So this is a jigsaw puzzle. This is a jigsaw puzzle. And we'll do the easiest one this time. This is the elephant. Uh -huh. And what you do is you just click on a piece and click to put it down. And, and this is just... And so even a three or four year old can, can do this. That, it's right? very easy to okay. master. That's great. Well, thank you very much. That's sure. Zerk's Learning Safari from Soleil. Thank you. Let's join Alan and Media Vision. And you have something intriguingly called Forever Growing Garden. What is this, yes, Alan? Yes, it's, it's a children's title, age three to eight, uh -huh. uh, CD-ROM, PC and Mac. And it's about growing a virtual garden in your computer. So it teaches kids about growing and yeah, seeds and plants? Yeah, it teaches ecology and everything. Oh, um, show me how this now works. The first thing we do is we select some seeds at the store. As we normally um, would do. I uh, pick a seed packet off the wall, mm -hmm. and I can flip it over and learn on the back how to grow them. I'll keep that one and put it in my basket. I'll pick a pumpkin seed. I'll keep that one. We also have some fantasy plants here on the left of the screen. Monster squash, sunflower that mm. grow little baby faces. <laughs> Pipers, tomatoes, the grow toes. Let's pick some tomatoes. Tomatoes. Okay. We'll keep that one. Um, many areas of the screen are hot here. As we click on this bag, for example, it morphs into a mm -hmm. hippopotamus head. Uh, for more detailed information on the plants, we have the almanac. We won't go into that. We won't have time for that. Okay, but so uh, I can actually plant these seeds now and, that's right. and have my virtual garden? That's right. And we'll water them and we'll take care of okay. the bugs and there will also be a gopher. Okay, how do I do this? Um, I'm going to drag the seed packet over the holes mm -hmm. here. We have tomatoes, you know, we'll drag okay. those, and they highlight over the hole. It's very easy motorically to do. So we're planting the seeds. Uh-huh. I'm dragging a seed packet, and um, let's pick a pumpkin as well. Let's minimize the packets here. First thing we do is we water. So I'm watering. Okay, and the program knows what's going on. I mean, if I oh water yeah. more or less, the plants grow more That's or less. That's right. You have to water several times, mm -hmm. and um, if you don't water, the plants don't die. This is for kids. Okay, but, okay. but they just but they don't, don't grow. grow as well. Yeah. Now, real gardens grow way too slow for kids or for TV programs. Right. So um, we've added a garden growth speedometer. Mm -hmm. I've set it for top speed here. Okay. But even at top speed, so we can't grow the second. garden fast enough. Sure. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sky view and go to the flower garden, which I've already grown, so we can see what a fully grown garden looks okay. like. So you can sort of save a garden and come back. You can to save it? a garden, okay. and the garden grows off the system clock. Okay, so it grows whether your computer is on or off. Huh. So now I'm going to click on this little house here, which is our flower garden, and we mm -hmm. also have a castle topiary in the, in the far distance there. Uh, we're going to load the, the uh, garden up, and then we'll cut a few flowers, okay. go to the flower store, and arrange them in a vase. Okay. That's interesting. You said it works off the system clock, so if I go to bed and wake up the next That's morning, right. I see my flowers That's grown right. a little it's, bit. That's right. It's grown. Pretty cool. And okay. you, know, you set your growing speed depending on when you plan to come back. Now, I'll grab my shears here, and I'll cut the... Um, snip some flowers. Snip some flowers there, and I'll snip some more here. Now, um, I'm going to go to the shop, and uh, we'll uh, arrange them in a vase. Uh, if you were to grow a vegetable garden, you would go to the market and you'd price the vegetables. Huh. And so either vegetables or flowers. Yeah, or, or, or a, a flower shop. Right. Now I'm going to pick a vase here, oh and I'll nice. collect that one, and I'll grab this little flower here and put it in the vase. And if you have grown a full garden, you can grow a very, very full bouquet. That is really and nice. And I'll click on the uh, dog and animate him. Okay, forever growing garden. Thanks very much, Thank Alan. Thank you very much. All right, finally, let's go over to Image Smith and Dominique, and you have something called Yearn to Learn Snoopy. What That's is Yearn right. to Learn? Who's, what, what age is it aimed for, first of all? Three to ten year olds, uh -huh. and obviously using Snoopy to feed its characters to make learning fun for kids. Okay, and you have different learning modules here? Uh, absolutely. There's five of them. Uh, we have comic strips, math games, a spelling game, a face drawing game, and some okay, music. Okay, let's see a couple. Okay, some math. Let's do a simple one where kids can put their finger on the screen. Uh -huh. Two to three year olds, roughly. So even two to three year olds oh, can be playing with this. Absolutely. Huh? All you have to do is just really use the mouse and click. Huh? Yep. And what's his game here? If two hmm. friends got on the bus, then how many would there be? A little graphic way to understand addition. Yeah. Or subtraction or whatever. Yeah. So now we can go to division. Division of, division of multiplication. Try to it's make a little that visual. For kids to a little harder. Yeah. And it takes a while for them to get into that. If five friends have four cookies each, then how many cookies are there? That's a nice altogether? way to show that. Okay. Yeah, so they can actually see okay. that. I think we know the answer to that one, huh, don't we? Yeah, we were okay. in school <laughs> that week. Okay. Now, I'd like to point out the uh, level structure. Uh, it automatically so adapts to the easier, ability. Yeah. They make a mistake. It makes uh, it easier. I want you to show me the music fun part of this. Okay. This is really, sure. really cool. Yeah, the music is meant to uh, give kids the opportunity to get to, to meet music for the first time. Yeah, it's kind of cute the way you do the waiting time, too. At least you see a cute little cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes it a little easier. Okay, so what All do we right. do here? Huh. Here's the band. So now we can get a, a lick going. So just by like clicking on the character, yeah. it gives us a little, uh, right. little look there. A little riff. Okay, now you can actually compose songs, right, with That's this? That's right. Now, to an, to an extent, you can uh, get some well, of the uh, Assemble these riffs little riffs, anyhow, huh? Yeah. Get these in. So that's enough for a demo. Okay. okay now we can have the band perform that. And that's the song you just put together, yeah. or the kid could have just put together. And kids don't know it, but they're really programming a computer. computer. That's right. <laughs> what a great introduction. <laughs> yeah, it is. That is really cute, Dominique. Yeah. So we have rock and yearn to learn. <laughs> yeah, yearn to learn <laughs> Snoopy. Thank that's you. That's right. All right, now you wouldn't think spreadsheets would turn most kids on, but there is a new fantastic program from Davidson Associates called The Cruncher that does just that. There are plenty of adults that shy away from spreadsheets, but these kids are having a good time with them thanks to The Cruncher, which combines tutorial programs with music and games. The Cruncher is a program that teaches you how to use a spreadsheet, and um, it's got all sorts of neat sounds and pictures to make it fun. Fish Out of Water teaches spreadsheet basics. It's a type of adding machine because everything that you put in here ends up down here. The Cruncher uses real-life situations to help kids understand the benefits of using a spreadsheet, such as estimating the cost of owning a pet or planning a party. Games such as Magic Square improve math skills. The object is to make all the rows add up to 15. Because here you can actually play a game and, you know, see it, see the characters moving instead of just, you know, reading a book and just seeing the words. Computer lab director Joanne Howard says the cruncher is winning over teachers as well as students. 
I think it makes it easy to learn a spreadsheet. I've learned a lot working with this program. And spreadsheet is new to me. I've taken a couple of workshops in it, and I still feel a little uncomfortable with it. But working with the kids on this, I'm ready to teach more about it now and, and expand it. The music is current. The characters have appeal to kids. Um, it moves quickly. I mean, it's, it's not slow running on the machines. And uh, I think they really are having a wonderful time with it. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. Well, maybe it's easy to teach math and reading on a computer, but what about boring subjects like geography and art? Well, our next guests will show us they don't have to be boring at all. Joining us now are Ilya Ramirez of Great Wave Software and also over there Joshua Marks of Electronic Arts. Ilya, let's start with your program, and it's called World Discovery, and this is about geography and world history? Yes, correct. Um, it's an educational program for home and school use for the ages 8 years old to adults. Um, right here we're showing, uh, we use a puzzle interface mm -hmm. where you can so display. So you clicked on, say, Eurasia, and you had to figure out where it went, the Middle East, Right, the it Caribbean. shows the um, display of what I'm looking for. Uh-huh. Okay, and then we can so zoom in So that was regions here. of the world. That was regions of the world. We can zoom in to a particular map, let's say Europe, mm -hmm. and it will take us into that map. And we, from there, we can do the choose the same thing, place countries inside Europe. Okay, Correct. so let's try a couple of those. Okay, there's Austria. Austria goes there. Okay, now what Germany. happens if you don't get it right? Well, let's try it. Uh, it just gives you the sort of bad sound. You and you can trying. keep trying. There you go. Mm -hmm. and you can find Greece. Greece. Now, you can identify more than just countries. There's capitals, currencies, independent states. Mm -hmm. um, you can also look for geographic features such as rivers and ranges, mountains, deserts, and oceans. Right, show me rivers or mountains, for example. Okay, well, let's see. Do you so know? There's the Danube. Okay, so that's the actual shape of the Danube River, and again, you find the place on the map where it would fit. Correct. Uh, okay. And I don't know where this one is. The, er the Ebro River, huh? Yeah. Um, we flunked on that one. We flunked that okay, one. So well we're going to move on picture. here okay. and show you that World Discovery has 12 different activities, mm -hmm. five elimination games, which each show the displaying of the shape like we did before. Okay. And then we can go into the quiz section where there are six different quizzes. We can challenge what we've ch test ourselves on what we've learned. All right, so show me the quiz portion. Okay, this will ask a question here. So where I have to figure out where are the Cantabrian Mountains? Whoa. Uh, what's your guess? Canterbury. I'd say Italy. Was those ones in Italy? Nope. Uh, okay. Uh, I think. Oh, Spain. okay. Spain. All pretty right. Good. So we can move on. Um, we'll go into games. Uh -huh. The last category is question and answer. There's over a thousand questions uh -huh. um, for at least one question on each country of the world, and we also invite our users to send in questions. Okay, and for so every question, questions. right, you can add questions, and for every question they send in that we use in a new uh, version of World Discovery, we'll pay them a dollar. Okay, which country's 18th century queen, famous for her youthful extravagances, was sent to the guillotine? Hmm? Probably France? Mm, I'd say that was Marie Antoinette. Oh, yeah, right, that was a good one. Okay, Marie Antoinette. And then we go into... Okay, that's very history. nice. World Discovery, and it runs on the Mac. Great. Oh, great wave. Thanks a lot. Let's go over to Joshua and take a look at Electronic Arts. And Peter Pan, a story painting adventure, a story painting adventure. Tell me what that is. Well, a uh, story painting adventure is a new line of products that we're putting out. We'll have four others out by the end of next year. Uh, it, it's an interactive Saturday morning cartoon, I guess is the best way to understand it. It also has some learning objectives, uh, including reading, decision making, problem solving, and creative so thinking. So it's got sort of the production values, the animation values of watching a cartoon on Saturday morning on TV, but you get to interact and play with it? That's correct. We try and actively involve the child into All the right. storytelling process. All right, show me how you do it, John. Okay, we do that through using these six characters, excuse me, mm -hmm. the uh, paint box pals. Uh, these are animated uh, interface elements. Okay, so sort of a brush and a pencil and animated characters. Right. The program starts off with an introduction. Uh, we won't go through the whole thing, but Peter Pan steals Barbecue's treasure map from okay. the infamous Captain Hook. I'll go right to our book character, yeah. which is our interface to getting where you want to go in the story. So I'll use the go to feature and go to the first scene where you can interact uh -huh. with the product. It's called Call Wendy. Peter's stolen the map and now he's going so to. This is give pretty it to deep. Wendy. You've got acts and scenes, and, and the kid can go anywhere inside the story. That's want, correct. Right? It's a linear story, but it's interactive as well because the scenes can be resolved in many different ways. 
so when Wendy might sleep is the rest waking of up. Sure. And it does sort of look like a Saturday morning right. cartoon. So immediately, three of the paint box pals, Sally, yeah, Winston, and Nick, turn around and offer their help. Uh -huh. They elicit so the help. I could paint something, draw something to help solve the problem. We'll use Nick here. Nick comes up with his notepad, and he's got four options he offers you to solve this problem. Uh, we'll use the phone. Now, Nick is a dot-to-dot -dot activity, connect the dots, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is touch the star. You don't have to click on it, and you'll see what magic happens. And there's a phone booth. Okay. And the star just goes ahead and uses it. That's right. Pretty nice. Wendy, dear, come out and see what I took from Hawk. So we successfully awoke Wendy, and now she comes out and we give her the map. Yeah, with over 30 scenes and hundreds of options and variable text, uh, the child will never see the same story twice. So I'll go to my favorite scene, which happens to be the river crossing in the second act. Okay. Uh, the second act starts after, uh, uh, after Hook steals the lost boys and Wendy, and now Pan is off to recover them. Okay, so here we are in the jungle somewhere. Tiger lilies! Peter! All the music was scored and orchestrated by Emmy Award winning, winning musicians. Mm -hmm. and there's a bad guy. <laughs> yep, one of the henchmen. Oops. <laughs> okay. So he wants to get across the river, but yep. there's the crocodile. This time we'll use Sally. Okay, Sally says I can help. Sally is our uh, politically correct or uh, environmentally correct sprayer. You okay. don't want to no, use no aerosol. That's right. Okay. Just a In pump. this case, uh, see, there's two places I can go here and here. I'll do the head okay, because so I really love this one. Spray the croc. Talk about crocodile rock. Okay, that's a way to get rid of the croc, huh? <laughs> that's right. All right, that is really and cute. And because kids love to do things over and over again, in our testing we found that out. We gave this rewind feature with some which is an hourglass, so if we want to see that again... It's the replay of the fun scenes. That's right. One, la it. one last thing I'd like to show you yeah. is, is the uh, play back my story feature, or the replay feature. After you get to the end of the story, you can play back the story like a movie, and uh -huh. you become like the movie director. So the lights dim, and we start over and from see the, the whole adventure, including the stuff you did and the, and the things you've created. That's and correct. So that's really nice. Okay, Peter Pan, a story painting adventure from Electronic Arts. Thanks a lot, Josh. Thanks, that's our look at software for kids. Stay tuned now for this week's Computer News on Random Access. In the random access file this week, Microsoft says, yes, Chicago is being delayed. After lots of rumors to that effect, a Microsoft spokesman said it now looks like the new version of Windows won't be released until early 1995. Chicago was originally set to launch this spring, then was delayed until fall, and now it looks like winter. Analysts say this will give IBM another shot at pushing OS2 during the busy fall selling season. Compaq is now the number one PC company in the world, at least for the past three months. It beat out former leader IBM, shipping 1.1 million PCs compared to 900,000 from IBM. Apple came in third with 855,000 computers shipped. However, IBM usually leads the pack in the fourth quarter of the year and is expected to still be the number one PC vendor over the course of the full year. Computergram International, an industry newsletter, is predicting a new PC price war at the end of this year based on the fact that several computer companies seem to be prepared to cut prices and profits in return for larger market share. The Wall Street Journal is predicting that multimedia 486 PCs will be selling for under $1,000 by the end of the year, with prices on standard 486 machines dipping to the $750 level by Christmas. In the latest software piracy figures released by the Software Publishers Association, the SPA says 47% of all business software used worldwide is pirated. Now that amounts to an annual loss in industry revenue of over $7 billion. Piracy in India, Pakistan, and Latin America is reported to be 95%, while the lowest rates of pirated software are in England and Ireland. The Pentagon says hackers have gotten into several unclassified sections of its computer files. The Department of Defense says files have been stolen or altered, and some records were erased and some subsystems shut down. The hackers got in via the Internet. The Pentagon says no classified areas were compromised, but the areas invaded include databases on ballistic weapons research, 
aircraft design, military payroll, and battlefield modeling. Finally, Dr. Ruth has made it to the world of CD-ROM. The famed sex therapist is soon to be featured on a new CD-ROM title from Creative Multimedia called Dr. Ruth's Encyclopedia of Sex. The new disc will be available this fall for about $35. And that's it for this week's Random Access. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Stelson.